Who do you think of when you think of competitive playoff bound teams? Who do you think of when you think of the 2017 Astros? Jose Altuve? Maybe Carlos Correa? What about the recent Dodger teams? When you think of them, do you think of Clayton Kershaw and maybe Kenley Jansen? It's easy to think of the stars that we see on SportsCenter every morning, the most common names on the back of jerseys we see at every ballpark. But what about the unsung heroes of these good teams? I'm talking about the guys who show up ready every single day to produce and do their jobs, but aren't necessarily as flashy as some other guys. The backbone of the team, but not quite the heart of the team. In this specific case, I'm going to look at a guy who was a big part of the early 2010s Nationals and a big part of those playoff teams back in Philadelphia. The guy who looks like he should be on Duck Dynasty, Jason Worth. Born on May 20th, 1979, Worth was born in Springfield, Illinois, and he grew up with his mother, Kim Schofield, and his stepdad, Dennis Worth. The Mr. and Mrs. both were great athletes themselves, with his mother, Kim, participating in the 1976 Olympic trials in track and field, and his father was a utility man for the Yankees from 1979 all the way up to 1982. His father hit a career 209 with three home runs and 15 RBIs. It's very clear Jason was meant to be an athlete from day one. The star of his high school team, Worth was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles after his senior season on June 3rd, 1997 as the 22nd overall pick and was signed with the team 10 days later. Worth would rake for the Orioles rookie team, hitting 296 and walking as many times as he struck out. The same couldn't be said for the rest of his minor league career though, at least with Baltimore. In need of relief pitching, the Orioles traded Worth to the Toronto Blue Jays in exchange for John Bale. Clearly, this wasn't one of the Orioles' smartest trades, which they don't make a lot of. After a few more years in the minors, Worth would finally prove himself and be called up to the Major League team on September 1st, 2002 against the Yankees. That day, he would go 2 for 4. During the last month of the season, Worth would be a below average hitter, hitting 261 with 12 hits, which included two doubles but no home runs. In 2003, Worth would only get 10 hits while playing about 10 more games than he did the previous year. After a subpar 2004 spring training, Worth would be traded to the Dodgers on March 29th in exchange for pitcher Jason Fraser. In 2004, the first season where he played a decent amount of games, 89 to be exact, Worth would show Major League Baseball a little glimpse of what he could be, hitting 262 with 16 home runs, 47 RBIs, and a 115 OPS+. Unfortunately, in the following year, Worth would decline, only hitting 7 home runs with 43 RBIs and 102 total games. During spring training of 2006, Worth would break his wrist and not play for the rest of the year. Things were not looking good for Worth as he was becoming a free agent that offseason. On December 20th though, Worth was given a shot by the Philadelphia Phillies who signed him to a one-year $850,000 deal. Although injuries would still bug him that year, he had a great season, racking up 8 home runs to go with 298 average and a 120 OPS plus in 94 games. The Phillies had seen enough giving him a two-year $10 million deal and finally healthy, Worth would make that deal worth it. Haha, <laughs> get it? Worth it? Okay, maybe I'm not a comedian. Worth would have an excellent two years, highlighted by his 2009 All-Star season, where he hit 268 with 36 home runs, 99 RBIs, and a 129 OPS+. After another great year in 2010, Worth would elect free agency and hit the open market. The Nationals, looking to add to a core that they were building and getting ready to compete, would sign Worth to a 7-year, $126 million deal, hoping he could build off his previous few seasons where he was finally healthy and producing. His first year in DC wasn't great as he hit 232 with 20 home runs and 50 RBIs, a bit of a step back from what the Nationals fans and the front office were hoping for. In 2012, it was the same story but just a little bit different. Production was up, sure, but injury bugs got him again and Worth would only play in 81 games just half the season. Again, just not something fans and higher ups were hoping for. But then I guess something just clicked in that big furry head of his because in 2013, Worth would have a season to remember. Talked about people maybe criticizing your age coming into this season, and you've said you've had a little bit left in the tank. You're convinced of that. Uh, how do you feel just about the way that you're swinging it and what you've been able to accomplish over these last four days? Yeah, those people can kiss my ass! <laughs> 
Thank you, Jason. Bob, we'll go back to you. Let's hear it! I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> this just happened. Uh, After this season, though, Worth would slow down, having a subpar season in 2015, and his last productive season was all the way back in 2016. His career would end in 2017, as he would play his final Major League game. It's worth noting he signed with the Mariners, but he never made the team. Although StatCast wasn't around during his prime years, you can just tell by the eye test that Worth could hit the ball really hard and really far. He could hit for average power, he could play solid defense in the outfield, and he was a good leader on some good Phillies and Nationals teams. While he could talk all day about how good Chase Utley and Bryce Harper were, we need to shed some more light on guys like Jason Worth, the unsung heroes of baseball.